Okay, welcome to your final step. We've got all the details down and it's time to start on the fur. Now, if you have, let's say, a feathery or scaly baby, then the same guidelines will apply, but it will be less textured. So, we're gonna start out by taking a look at our reference photo. Find the darkest color on the photo. So if you have a one colored pet, it's gonna be where the shadows are, probably under the chin, around the ears, and same for Andrew even here. He's got a shadowy bit here under the chin. His stripes are also gonna be the darkest bit. And then the next color up is gonna be a slightly lighter brown, gonna be in the ears a bit, a little bit around the face, his shoulder, and then step up from that, we're gonna have even lighter between brown and tan to fill in the spaces in between. And then a nice tan around the eyes, in the ears, there's a pinky brown in the ears. So we just wanna get really acquainted with the colors that are there. What colors do you need? And what we're gonna do first is mix them. So that way we don't have to worry about mixing the colors later on, we just got them ready to go. So I'm taking my slightly bigger brush here to mix the colors. I wanna make sure that I mix plenty of each color. I don't wanna to have to worry about trying to remake the color later on. So make sure to mix plenty of each color. Starting with the darkest, for Andrew, it's gonna be a black brown. So I'm taking some black, teeny bit of black into some darker brown here. Mixing in a small little spot. Wiping most of it off and going for a rinse in between. Don't forget to dry the brush off and move up to the next color. So for him, I'm just gonna probably use this regular brown. So I'm not gonna need to mix that, but if you're mixing maybe your step up brown or your step up gray, go ahead, make the next lightest shade. And then after that, Andrew's got a mix between tan and brown. So I'm gonna take some of my lighter brown into my darker brown. Very nice. I'm thinking about creating, after all, a brown shade. I just remember sometimes using the brown just straight uh, I don't typically like that color. So I'm gonna make a darker tan brown and a lighter one. Tan brown, it's a color. I just made it up. <laughs> okay, so I can noticeably tell the difference between all of these colors. I'm even gonna lighten this lighter one up with just a touch of white. Pretty. So keep playing with the colors till you get them about right. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I've got three colors, my darkest, my second darkest, <laughs> and uh, a step lighter there. Next, I'm gonna want this nice tan color. So, I'm gonna see how white and light brown look. A little more white. Yeah, good enough for me. Okay, so we've got that. And then if I want off white, I've got this kind of peachy white here that I will probably end up using. And then I've got regular white as my very lightest color that I can use. I'll also want that for his little whiskers later on. Okay, 
or I almost forgot the pink in his ears. So I'm taking some pink in with some red ochre here. It's kind of a brown red. You could also take pink and brown. And I want to get kind of a pinky tan color going on. That looks pretty good to me. I might even do a darker version next to it just in case. Yeah. Okay, so once you've got all your colors mixed, it's time to start painting. So I'm switching back to my itty bitty teeny tiny brush and find those darkest areas on your sketch. Now, because it's a mini canvas, some of these lines, especially if you have a striped kitty, it might get a little bit confusing. One thing you can do is to start by, well, first of all, you can start with just one spot that you know for sure, like the middle of his head, right? We all know the kitties have the dark stripe right down the middle, like so. And then from there, look over at your picture. Oh, he's got this dark bit in the middle and then a squiggly shape here. Oh, I bet that's the squiggly shape right here. So work your way around. And I always say if it gets confusing, simplify, just use your picture. If you turn out to go over some of the lines or put something in the wrong spot, don't panic. You can, if you get it quickly enough, you can use the eraser when you wet your brush just a little bit. So wet it, dry it a little bit off, and then wipe the paint right off. For example, if that was the wrong spot, I would start by erasing just a little bit at a time here. Okay? But it was the right spot, so now I'm going to paint back over it. Another option for little uh-ohs is let it dry and paint over it with another color later on. In the meantime, work on getting all of your darkest bits. Okay, my dears, so once you have your darkest color all filled in, you can move on to your medium color. Now, a lot of people might be noticing like, this looks kind of strange. This isn't looking exactly like my pet, especially if you have a one colored pet and they just have these random splotches of color. Once you get um, your medium color on, we can start to blend and create a little bit of texture, um, but it does look a little strange at first. If you have a very fluffy animal, it's important that you get these big blocks of shadow in. So you may be wondering like, why did she outline this whole area? Um, well, it's because if you get the shadow and the dark space underneath, then you can come back with highlight on top and create really cool texture and really get a more realistic feel versus um, your animal just turning out to be a kind of blob of lines and fur with very little definition. So that's why we start from dark to light to really get the shape of everything, the shadows filled in first, and then we can fill in the medium color and add some highlights on top. So I find it to be the easiest way to keep the shape of your animal and to be able to add texture on top. So moving on to your second color, my kind of regular brown here, and filling in all the appropriate spots. So again, taking a look at your picture and filling in the spots. Do your best to cover up all the little white bits of canvas. Now, if it's getting harder and harder to paint, that might mean one of two things. One, you don't have enough paint on the brush. Two, your paint is getting very dry. So you might need to remix. 
and or you could add just a tiny touch of water to it. Okay. Hmm, let's see. I think that's about it for this color. I'm going to go a step lighter. And we're going to start to fill in the spaces in between. So you should be at this point, after you finish this step with this color, you should be filling in almost the whole pet. And if you feel like it works for you, you can start to do a little bit of texture. So instead of just painting and filling in the space, especially at the edge, maybe you want to do some fuzz by doing some little small strokes in the direction of the hair. I'll set it once, I'll say it twice. Can look a little strange at first before we do any blending or texture. My color might just be a little bit off for him. It's a little less like caramel colored, a little more brownie, but it's a good under color. And I'm going to come back over with some texture on top to get it a little bit more accurate. So if you notice your color might be a little off, don't worry, it's not too late. Okay, so I'm going to fill in my ears next. Going into where the little fuzz is going to be a bit so that I can get some texture in there. Okay, we want a little bit darker on the outside. I'm going to lighten the nose up just for fun. <laughs> He is stinking cute. And then I'm going to move up to the next lights color. So wherever you're at is perfect. Um, just keep moving up to the next level of brightness or lightness. So he's got some extra red brown around the nose. So I just mix a little bit of that red ochre right into my medium color and I'm going to do a little bit of blending here just going over in between the two now looking at it here it's very very similar so I'm going to try a little bit more red here we go okay so Gonna rinse and I'm gonna do a little blending. I'm gonna take the medium color 
and just kind of go back and forth in between the two colors. We blend up a little bit. There seems to be a little more shadow on the side of the nose, so I'm adding a little bit of brown, my darker color to the edges. So I'm just kind of going around rubbing in any little bits of white that I still see, softening the dark color um, with whatever's on my brush here, this medium tan. I'm going to bring out a couple features I felt like got a little lost. Okay, so now um, before we move into the white, I want to do just a little bit of texture and softening and blending in here. So I've got my dark, my medium, uh, my tan, and the ear colors. Everything is filled in except for the white colors. So at this point, I'm coming in with my medium brown that I was using and or your dark. So for example, between the dark and the medium, I wanna soften the edge and create some texture by doing tiny little strokes of the dark color from the edge of the dark color into the medium color. So it's pretty subtle, especially with these tiny brushes, tiny canvases. Okay, but you should be able to create a nice softer blend as well as if you needed a second coat on the dark one or anything like that. It now looks, instead of two separate colors, it's a blend of the two. Now you don't want to put too much of the dark color everywhere otherwise it will all just turn into the dark color. So you want to make sure that you're being gentle and just using a little bit at a time. Okay so I'm coming back up to the side of the face. We've got the two different browns. Same kind of thing. I'm going to soften the edge by doing little furry strokes that follow the pattern of the fur. If I see any little white bits, I'm still trying to cover those up. Okay, so you can see I softened it there. Now we can switch to a lighter color. Let's see, we had the kind of tan brown going on. I'm going to need to mix just a little more. Okay, so same thing. I am softening the edge here, doing a little texture. It's very subtle, I'm covering any little white bits. Maybe doing a little second coat where needed, adding a little bit of fur here. Maybe there's a little highlight coming into this area. Can lighten up other areas like so. 
So now I've got all my colors all in one little spot in little textured lines. It's going to create a bigger sense of unity between all the colors. Soften any hard lines if you have a one colored pet. And all you need to do is create this shape with shadows. This is especially important for you. If you have stripes, we're going to be min minimally softening things, but keeping the different colors for sure. Okay, again, going from medium to tan. And then bringing that highlight color back in here. I want to lighten up some of these stripes. So you can see it's kind of starting to come together a little bit more. It looks a little less blocky. The colors are starting to resemble more of the true colors on the canvas. Just a bit. <laughs> Bringing highlights back in. You can always darken areas going back to your dark color. Let's say I covered something up a little too much, like in this little spot. Let's come back, redarken. If you had some background color that you were yet to completely cover up, you can do a second coat across that. The other thing you can do is part of the simplify thing is um, do a little extra outline across something. If something along your edge, let's say this edge of the ear is kind of strange and I wanted to darken it, I watered down my dark color. I'm just going to outline the ear. Now, there is a highlight that goes around his little ears. I do plan on adding that in, just not this very moment. Still working on softening some of his little face. Covering up any little white dots that are left.
What a handsome boy. Okay, so I'm taking a step back, checking out what else is here. Oh, like that deserved some attention. So handsome. So I could fiddle with the details for a while, but I'm going to say that this is pretty great. I'm pretty happy with it. There's a couple things I want to fix. It looks like part of his little eyeliner got uh, painted over. So just take a look. Did you lose anything that you really want to keep? The shape of something important? Maybe the eyes? Eyeliner, something like that. Okay. So I'm going to hop over to well, before I do that, actually, let's give him a little chinny chin chin. Okay, so we're going to move on and start to fill in in this area we have yet to go to. So wherever you are on your pet, wonderful. Um, at this point, you should be getting to your lightest color, your highlights. All right, so I'm blending, softening here by doing tiny little fur strokes into my brown. Fur, fur, fur. In the direction of the fur. Oop. Might have gone a little too far in one spot, so I'm going to rinse off the brush, dry most of it off. Oop. And See if I can wiggle some of this off. Yeah, there we go. Let me come back in with the little brown. Nice. Okay. So, continuing with this tan color, just gonna go ahead and fill in all of this. Okay, so I want to create just a little bit more shape in the chin. And I'm going to blend out this chin. 
just a little bit, soften the two. So I brought the darker color out a little bit, then I'm going to bring the lighter color back in, going right over the edge, softening. I also want to bring the same technique in towards the nose. You might notice it's a little darker around the mouth area. We'll take a look at what's there. Choose the appropriate color very carefully and gently with very little bit of paint. Bring that in. Um, you can't really see it in the photo, but I want to kind of create um, a little more shadow around here, around his little cheekies. I'm just softly bringing some of this color in around. I'm trying to bring out the chin a little bit, um, even though in the photo you really can't see it at all. And another way we can do this is by bringing in a highlight. So I kind of darkened some areas. Now I'm going to bring in some actual white. And I'm going to do some tiny little furry chin hairs. All around the mouth. Hmm. So kind of keep just looking at your picture, finding maybe darkening some areas that I put a highlight on that maybe didn't really need that. There we go, that's Andrew right there. And I'm just gonna soften and add shadow to the bottom now like I just did up at the top. Kind of watered down that color just a little bit. That's my medium brown color. All right, and we are getting really close to being all done here. Just kind of trying to find some areas where I can bring some finishing touches. I'm going to do some little white hairs on the chest. So again, we did a little low light with the darker color. Now I'm bringing in a highlight, adding some texture. And I'm going to do the same thing up near the ears. So I'm going to use white, roll that brush, teeny little hairs, barely touching the canvas, adding that texture. Mm -hmm. Same thing on the other side. Reload your brush when you need to. And I'm just bringing a little more highlight here and there.
So cutie. All right, so I've got fur on the ears. Uh, I wanted to add a highlight around the ears. So I've got my tannish color. Okay, I'm just peeking around to see if there's any other area I want to add a little texture or a little highlight to. Or maybe a low light, I wanted to bring shadow back somewhere, bring some shape into some place. Blend some area, darken something. Okay, so the final thing that I'd like to do on Andrew here is his whiskers. So if you have a kitty or a doggy with whiskers, um, most of the time they're white. Uh, if you have a white dog, maybe you could do a gray. So I'm just rolling the brush in some nice fresh white. And take a look at where the whiskers lay first. And you're going to want to very, very, very carefully and very lightly apply them. So starting up at the top, you can see my brush is this teeny tiny point. I'm anchoring my hand and I'm going to just whip out a couple whiskers, paying attention to what direction they're going to go in. I'm picking up the brush at the end of the stroke. So one, two, maybe three. If you need to make them a little longer, you can very carefully adjust. Maybe it's too long. So again, if you don't like something, carefully can erase a bit of it with your brush, clean brush. Now I said it earlier, but your painting is not gonna look like your picture. It's going to be resemblant of your pet, but it's not going to be an exact photocopy. So just enjoy the subtle, cute things that make your painting yours. Have some fun with it. Ooh, that one was really thick. Reload that brush every couple of strokes. Oh my goodness, so handsome. If you haven't noticed, I am a little obsessed with calling my cat handsome. 
<laughs> okay, so take a look. Is there anything else that feels maybe off to you? Do you want to bring that highlight back out in the eye? Yes, I do. How did you know? Okay, so I brought the highlight back out in the eye. Sheeny, shiny. Just made it that up. Cool. So if there's anything else that's catching your eye, go ahead and fix it or adjust with it or keep playing with it. Um, just keep in mind at a certain point, you're going to have to stop and declare it finished. And that is all folks. I hope that you had so much fun with your mini canvas and I hope that I was able to guide you in a very smooth way. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me on my website and or leave a comment. Um, thank you again for joining me for the tutorial and I hope to create with you soon.